now that we have a functioning model with a high performance, we can use this model to pre predict over all of the data. And the reason we're going to do this is because when we get new data into this data set, it will run over the entire set and give a prediction for the new data. However, I have used dataset.head to take a look at our current data set. And I would like to insert a prediction column next to profit. And we can do that using the insert function in predicting over our data set. So we're going to insert our predictions next to the profit column. And we can see where that is by just counting from zero, which is the first column, zero, one, two, three, and I would like it at the fourth place. So we can use our data set variable and use the insert function. And let me bring this up a bit. And the first thing we need, and we can always see shift tab, is the location. And the location is four. And then we want to pass it our model variable. And we want to predict. And what do we want to predict? We want to predict all of our x values, which is the whole data set. And then after that, let's check the data set head and we're missing a position up. Oh, so we also need to give this a, a name here. So let's pass it predictions. So now if we take a look at that, we have our location column and the value. And then if I press shift enter, we have our prediction column and we can see how well the prediction performed next to all of the data. So now you have a model that you can use in Power BI, but you have to make a choice. We can use the data here and export it so that we can ingest it into Power BI. And the way you would do that is, let me document that, save as CSV. And all we would do is use our data set and use the to CSV function. And then we pass it a full data set or any name you would like dot CSV. And now this is available to be ingested into Power BI. It's not necessarily advised to run a model in Power BI, but this is a very simplistic one. So we're going to go over to Power BI and add in the essential code for our dashboard and data. So I'm going to bring in Power BI. I've already loaded in the original data, so I'm going to go to the Edit Queries menu. I'm going to go to Transform, Run Python Script, and now we need to bring in the script to run this linear regression model over what we have in Power BI. So let's first Move back over to our Jupyter Notebook. We know we need to load in the load in the essential libraries. So we've done that. And we're not going to be visualizing in here so we can get rid of the visual libraries. So we'll have a truncated code. We don't need to bring in the data set because it's already there. We don't need to have the describe or the correlation table. We don't need to check the data sets. And we know we don't need to do a lot of these. The first thing we do need to do is encode our columns. So I'm going to go back over to Power BI and bring that in. Now we can bring in our machine learning libraries. We go back over to our regression. We get our features and the target. 
And so now we have our, in each one of these hashtags is defining what our code is doing. So it's very readable for anyone. We go back over, we have to get our X and Y. We get our training and test set. We're almost complete here. Then we have our model where we trained this model. And this time we don't need to get the predictions over this time. We just need to fit the model. So we only need this part. And now we can finally go down and we can get the final part of the code, which would be here. And, and now we can run that, see what happens. We can see we're asked about the privacy. I'm just going to ignore. You please set this to what you need for your particular output. So we have an error here. It says there's no library called sklearn. So we know how we can fix that. We can get our anaconda prompt environment. Then we can load in sklearn by using pip or conda conda install and then what do we want to install sklearn now that is successfully loaded we can double click at the gear icon copy and paste this cancel i like to start a new script editor it just seems to work better this way and then i am going to rerun this so we have rerun the code and now you see we have a list of tables we all know that the end result of our table is the data set so we want to reopen this one once we expand that table now you can see that you have your profits, your predictions all loaded. We can close and apply this. And once we have that, we, you can start to visualize what you would like. For example, we know you have a prediction column. And you know you have a profit column and you can see how close these two predictions are there are multiple ways you can visualize this so a visual like this doesn't really add much value because we know we're looking at 50 separate startups and right now we're just looking at the actual versus the prediction and it's probably better to turn this into a card by pressing the card and now we have the predictions we can press control and copy and then control V to get another equally sized box and then we can bring in profit to see how close our prediction model is next what we can do is look at our 50 different startups with this prediction and profit difference. So if we click into our data table and go over to the data tab on the far left, we can see that these are 50 rows, but we need to have an index so we can separate these into 50 different lines of data. So I'm gonna to go to transform data, and then I'm going to be presented with the edit queries menu next what I'm going to do take our data and create an index so I can go to add a column then I can click index column and we can see we have created an index change this 
into a text so it does not summarize. And then I'm just going to close and apply. Once I've done that, I have my index and I can bring that in. And then I'm going to get predictions and profit. And then I'm going to turn that into a horizontal bar chart, but not the one that is stacked, the one that is separate. And I'm going to move that out. And then what we can see is where our prediction may have not been perfect. We can possibly change this to another color so we can see it a little bit better. And what we can do is see at this particular one, we have an actual of 14,000, but we predicted 48,000. So something about this particular line of data caused our model not to have a very accurate prediction. And what this would require is a little bit more analysis. That's just one way to view our output of our prediction model. Of course, you can bring in some of your Python visuals and create a very elaborate story.